Good morning or good afternoon, depending upon where you are in the world. Welcome to, today, to today's Virtual Bridge session, brought to you in association with College Development Network and JISC. Today is the 65th Virtual Bridge session, but we are not retiring. Today, I'm delighted to introduce Sarah Knight, who is Head of Data and Digital Capability at JISC. Sarah will be sharing the emerging themes from JISC's recent Digital Experience Insights Student Survey for FE, as well as some background to the service. JISC has made this service free to FE colleges this year, and this promises to be a year when the data will be even more crucial to help us navigate and understand this strange environment that we find ourselves in. So if agreeable with everyone, we'll let Sarah present. We can have a few questions either during it or at the end, and a more informal discussion at the half hour mark where we wave goodbye to those watching on YouTube. So without further ado, Sarah, could you please start? Thank you. Thank you, Owen, and really delighted to be with you today. I'm just going to share my screen um, and I will then give a little bit of an introduction. Um, so bear with me a second. Just make sure that you can, hopefully. Is that coming through okay? Everyone see that okay? Yes. Great, okay. Well, um, I'm delighted to be with you today. I'm Sarah Knight. I've worked at JISC for many, many years, both in the FE and in um, HE. And I'm head of now data and digital capability in JISC. So my team has responsibility for working on um, and taking forward the projects that we started a number of years ago around how we know um, what students and staff are using technology for and also um, a lot of work that we're doing around our supporting our digital, building digital capabilities. So in other words, helping staff and students to develop the digital capabilities they need to live, learn and work in a digital world. So I'm really delighted to share with you um, a snapshot really and some highlights from this year's um, surveys that we've been running with colleges and universities across the UK. Um, the formal reports are going to be released on the 14th of September. So it really is a, a bit of a sneak preview, um, but uh, you know, hopefully this will um, encourage you to have a look at the full reports when they come through um, in two weeks time. There's a, a lot more information and a lot of really detailed recommendations, which we hope can really help support you um, in the, the current climate as well. Well, a little bit of background. Our surveys um, were originally out of a project that we started back in 2013. And we have, throughout uh, my time at JISC, always worked very closely with students in gaining a better understanding of how they're actually using technology. Of course, that's even more important now in the current environment. And, uh, you know, we need ways in which we can assess students' experiences of the digital environment. So the surveys are one route to doing that. Um, obviously, we always encourage um, colleges to speak to their learners, which I know you all do, um, but sometimes it is very useful to have a baseline around your experiences of your students. Um, but also, moving on from students, where we started with the surveys back in uh, um, 2016, we have also, of course, um, now surveys for teaching staff professional services staff and in HE researchers. So we really then can have a holistic view of how students and staff are using technology within your, within your college or within your university. So the whole purpose of this is to really in aid improvement and enhancements around your digital environment. Um, we can baseline your ex in students' experiences and staff experiences, but also benchmark um, your provision with other colleges in the sector both within Scotland and also um, nationally. So that's really important to actually then have some evidence that can feed back into your digital strategy and enable to show those improvements year on year. So the survey I'm going to speak to you about today um, was run from um, October last year, um, ending in May this year. Um, it does cover pre and post COVID, um, although the results and findings were, were not considerably different um, in terms of those that we collected pre and post, as we expected the behaviours and attitudes to take longer to, to, to form in the short period that we were surveying the students um, over. But we did collect our largest number of uh, students' responses in the past four years of running these surveys. So really delighted to say that we had nearly 20,000 um, FE students and we also had nearly 20,000 HE students. 
So really powerful set of data for us to be able to gain some insights into how students are using their technology. Um, I've popped the URL on there and obviously the slides we'll make available, Owen, um, after the, uh, the webinar as well. So you can go back and have a look at these in a bit more detail. Um, so taking that forward, and I will come back obviously in a moment to talk about the data and what we found, but just a little heads up around um, what we are currently doing in terms of refreshing our question sets for launch in October. Um, a real plug here, because this is something that you all have access to at no cost. Um, for FE, you are able to run these surveys within your colleges and get this data back for yourselves. So I really hope that we can um, encourage many of you to participate in the coming year. But the sorts of questions that we are um, uh, updating are obviously to bring in the fact that we know that students may be on campus, they may be still working remotely, or they may be a blend of the different learning, um, learning um, situations that they're in. So we will be updating our questions to ensure that that's taken into account. Um, these are some of the, the questions that we know our, our surveys will be answering. Um, and whether that's important from an IT director perspective, whether it's important from learning and teaching or for, for TEL, roles, ILT, it's all really important that we have got this evidence base that we can draw on. So things about Wi-Fi provision, for example, is always important on campus, but even more so when students are working remotely to know that they have got reliable broadband and Wi-Fi access and a space to learn. So these are some of the newer areas that we'll be incorporating into the questions going forward. Um, also important to know what devices your students have access to and how they are learning with those. Um, and I will share um, you know, the data that we have from this year's survey, which does start to raise a few questions around that. Um, importantly, how do we know what students are using the technology for for their learning? Um, and a lot of really um, you know, good data that we will be able to share back on that. And that sort of evidence of impact on digital on the student's experience. So some of the questions um, that I will be uh, touching on today will give you um, some indications around some um, answers to those questions. But obviously going forward for the new data set that we are working on for October, we will have a very comprehensive set for the new COVID um, situation that we're now in. Right, so going into, and I'm just going to go back um, to the previous slide. Um, the survey itself, uh, whether that be for students or for staff, is broken down into four key areas. So we're asking questions that relate to students in terms of their own use of technology and the technology they have access to. We're asking questions in relation to how they're using technology at the college. We're also asking questions around how they're using it within their, their learning and teaching um, or research depending on their role. Um, obviously for, if it's for staff, that's the teaching and research role. Um, and then across all three or four um, audiences there, looking at question sets that ask around um, how they are developing their digital skills to get some indication around support that they may be needing. So let's go back to the first theme. And I have just pulled out a few nuggets here. Um, as I say, the full detail will be in the reports um, due to be shared shortly. But one of the questions that we always start with is asking learners around what devices they have access to uh, for their learning. So these are personally owned devices. Um, and as we'd expect there, there's a high percentage there of students that have got the smartphone. And if we're thinking about those students, perhaps in pre-COVID, um, they could be using that um, for aspects of their learning, but they would not be reliant on that. They would be coming into college, they would be accessing the devices that you have um, available. Post-COVID and in lockdown, we are aware that many colleges have had to supplement and support students with access to devices. Because if we look there, um, we can see that there are lower percentages there of students that may have laptops, desktops, tablets, um, and, and of course, 3% of learners that didn't have any of those devices. So always, you know, a, a sobering um, thought there that, you know, the digital divide is still there. And one of the key things we need to know is how we can be supporting learners going forward to make sure that not just that they have a device, but they are able to access the systems that we're asking them to access and that they're sufficiently high spec 
to be able to do so. And of course, subsequently, that the, the broadband connection that they have is a reliable one. How are they, how are they paying for that connection? Um, are they having to share that with other um, uh, members of their household? And of course, where are they studying? Do they have a place to study? So these are some of the questions that we'll be broadening out in the new question set to really ensure that we have got a full picture um, around how um, uh, students are, what access they do have for their learning. Um, this is a new question we brought in this year, and it was interesting just to get a measure of attitudes and confidence in relation to learners' use of digital. And you'll see there that they report quite high levels of confidence in trying out new technologies. Um, although when you ask about enjoyment, um, you know, how are they enjoying trying out new and innovative technologies, um, that, that sort of drops in terms of percentages there. Um, we'll see that the majority of students are comfortable in using mainstream technologies. Um, but, you know, we, we, we know that learners, and um, this goes back to some of our earlier research, it's always really important to be able to articulate to learners why you're using technology in a particular way. What are the benefits? How is it going to support them with their learning? Um, students always say, please don't make assumptions that we know how to use technology for learning. We might know how to use the apps, the, the tools that we're using in our social lives, but we are still very much dependent on our tutors to be able to support us with knowing how to use technology effectively in a, for our learning. Um, and that is still very much the case. Now, we, we, we um, both from the quantitative, but also we have um, captured qualitative um, responses back within the question set. There's opportunities for students to add comments and, and uh, uh, answer some of the questions. Apologies. Okay, that's fine. I have, a, I have three boys at home at the moment. I return to school next week. I can't at the moment see that we've got a stray cat that tends to um, visit us and eat all our other cat's food. So that was, that was the warning. I've got a cat in the house. Apologies. Um, so I think this quote is quite sobering. Um, you know, this, this was a quote from an FE learner who was saying, teachers basic computer skills like Microsoft Word because we don't have that on our phones. Um, so, you know, I think we, again, going back to those, don't make any assumptions, particularly when we are talking about digital skills development. Um, we are still wanting to ensure that all our students have a baseline of which we can move them and progress them forward on. And not all students will be in the position where they have got the skills that we would be expecting them to have. So theme two is about technology in your organisation. So thinking about the technology your learners are accessing um, when they come into college or when they're accessing technology remotely. Um, I think overall, and I think you know, this, this does reflect really positively on you know, FE across the UK, that 75% of learners rated the quality of their organisation as, as uh, good, excellent or best imaginable. Um, which is fantastic and I think shows, you know, the effort that it, the colleges are putting in to the digital provision, the environment, the support that learners are getting. But sort of a little bit more sobering is that the access to reliable Wi-Fi on campus has dropped this year. Um, you know, it's always hovered around about sort of the 70-ish um, percentage that's gone down this year. Um, and again, you know, the percentage of students that agree that, you know, that their college has access to online systems and services from anywhere, um, again, is, is a fairly low percentage. Um, also, in relation to support for them to use their own digital devices, um, that was also, you know, fairly low. So it'll be very interesting to see how these figures change with the new um, data that we gather from October onwards where colleges are, you know, there isn't, there isn't a choice anymore. We, we need to be supporting students' use of their own devices. We need to be ensuring that they have got access to all the systems that they need. Um, and it's absolutely critical to their learning. Um, this delves a bit deeper and thinking back to what we said about, you know, having access to the essential, um, you know, services. Um, looking now at access to digital resources on demand. Um, and some of these figures were quite surprising. Now, bear in mind, of course, that the majority of the data, so 65% was pre-COVID, but even so, um, there's still, those still are areas, I think, where there's definite improvement. Um, the ones where we sort of picked up on were sort of e-books and e-journals, because that is something that I know at GIST we've worked 
very hard at over many years to, to really encourage um, access uh, um, to, to those types of resources. Um, so that's sort of an area I think to, to, to go back and look at. And some of these may be, and I think, you know, this is where this is really interesting to then start having more um, detailed conversations with students and saying, right, well, well, are you aware that we offer these services? Because, you know, there is no doubt that colleges are offering these services to their learners, but perhaps the signposting is not as visible. So it's really important, again, to make sure, particularly now, obviously, and I think this is an area that it has a big focus on in terms of student induction, certainly for students that will be joining us um, this, this academic year, but we are really clear about accessing um, where these, these materials and resources can be found. Um, I think access to recording lectures, obviously bear in mind that, that again, probably more pre-COVID, um, because I think subsequently, particularly as we're moving to um, sort of remote, um, remote teaching, there will be the need obviously to ensure that students can have access um, to recorded lectures um, following on. Now I love this one because this is a question we always ask and uh, this year we're asking, so what apps or platforms outside of, of the institutional learning environments have you used to discuss or collaborate with other learners? Um, and you can see there the range of different um, you know, sort of apps and tools that they are using. Um, obviously Snapchat, WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, um, you know, coming to the fore um, and obviously bringing in more the social um, aspects. Um, but interestingly there, I think, you know, that, that Teams really stands out um, as uh, something that, that students are becoming more familiar with. And obviously we're seeing that many, many colleges have made that move into Teams um, during this sort of period of lockdown. So, you know, it's interesting there to see actually, yes, there's still the social tools, but Google, Zoom, Teams um, are sort of starting to come through quite strongly as well. And perhaps that boundary between, you know, that where we had sort of distinct differences, while well, they're not going to engage with any of the institutional systems, it's starting to blur more um, in, the, in this one. Um, and lastly, in this section, we always, through the surveys, the purpose of the surveys as well, is to really ensure that students feel that they can have a voice, that they can share their feedback around their technology experience. And despite, you know, the fact these surveys have been running since 2016, we've gathered nearly, nearly close to almost 200,000 responses during that time of, of students' voices. Um, you know, that this year that learners still felt that only 26% agreed they had the chance to be involved um, in decisions about digital services. So a real, you know, really starting to think, particularly in the new, um, new normal that we're in, that we really do need to be encouraging opportunities to gather student input, to gather their experience even more important than ever now. So, you know, and again, just a, a quote there from the qualitative uh, responses that we got. Um, you know, it, it, students are aware, you know, of, of how things could be improved and would really like the opportunities as well of sharing, you know, what, what, they, what they would like to see improvements on as well as obviously giving feedback on what works well. So moving on to theme three, which is technology and your learning. And I think this is one that is really, you know, there is so much rich um, information in, in this section. And I've just, again, pulled out a few highlights. Um, but in here, it is about um, thinking about, again, you know, what, what just how do learners perceive the overall quality of digital teaching and learning? Um, and again, similar as we had with 75% before in the previous question, it got 76% of learners feel that the quality of digital teaching is good, excellent or best imaginable, which is fantastic. Um, and again, really good evidence going back, you know, in terms of the, the, uh, the quality of the experience that learners get coming into college. Um, then we've got some in interesting questions and I've just sort of pulled out a few. Um, and I think this goes back to a comment I was making earlier around students still look to their, their teachers, they still look to their tutors, their lecturers to be guided around using technology. And most, 50% uh, of students said that lectures on their course is a common most source of support in using technology in their learning. Obviously peers are important um, and you know, you, you are still finding um, online videos and some of the earlier research we did when we interviewed learners around, so where, you know, what, what's your trusted source of support um, in relation to, to learning? You know, where do you go to get extra help if your tutor's not available? And always the answer comes back as YouTube. 
So, you know, there is still um, that recognition among students that, you know, there is a wealth of information online. And of course, that then goes back to the importance of ensuring that, um, that learners have got those critical skills to evaluate the re online resources that they are accessing and ensuring that the content is reliable. Um, so that just brings in that aspect. Um, so thinking about what we were saying earlier um, around, you know, looking at um, the qualitative responses and the word clouds that we've generated from this. So this is asking learners around what digital tools or, tap or apps learners find really useful for learning. And as I said earlier, with the, uh, the ones they were using for sort of collaboration, again, we're starting to see, uh, you know, some more of the institutional systems coming through here. So, you know, the ones obviously that stand out there, we've mentioned YouTube, um, we've mentioned Google, Microsoft, Kahoot for quizzes, Quizlet. So, you know, we're starting to see um, quite an interesting collection. Um, of tools and, and apps that they're using. It's always really interesting, and I didn't do this for this presentation, but to contrast that against the, the um, HE student responses and just to see some of the differences there. Um, probably less interactive, you know, um, as, as what we're seeing here in terms of the tools that are being used by staff are tools that encourage that interaction, that collaboration. Um, with students, you know, just thinking about some of the ones that are on there. But wow, what a, what a wealth of uh, materials and that our students are using. Now, this question, I think, starts to really unpick um, the ways in which technology is being used, either in the classroom, you know, or online with, with, uh, with technology. And here we were asking learners around what, what, do you, what digital activities do you carry out on a monthly or more frequent basis? And then as we sort of move, move from the top and going down, you'll see the percentages start to decrease. So a lot of learners, so 86% of learners say they got digital feedback on their work. Um, obviously, there's a small percentage that still don't, which is concerning. 79% work with data. Um, in terms of analysis or visualization. 68% of learners create a digital record or portfolio of their learning. 67% of learners worked online with other learners, but 33% said they never did this. And again, thinking about the workplace, thinking about the ways in which collaboration digitally is now, you know, in every aspect of work that we do, Thinking about if we are, again, assuming that learners are doing a lot of learning remotely coming in the next academic year, that opportunity to be able to collaborate, to be able to work all together online with other students is really important and a really important skill. Obviously aware that some learners will not have that preference and may, for all sorts of reasons, not be comfortable in doing that. But it is something there that we need to be supporting students to develop their skills in. Um, and the last one I don't think is surprising, um, although knowing the pockets of excellent practice that exist in FE at the moment with the use of VR, AR, um, you know, the simulations that, that are being carried out, um, there's that sort of an area, obviously, there is a lot more potential to, to, to uncover, particularly, again, if we are thinking about that replicating, how we replicate some of the lab-based work, um, you know, the field work, obviously that's where um, the simulations, the ALVR can really add that more of an equitable experience to learners. So there is um, still an emphasis, you know, we are seeing that, that sort of list, um, you know, there is a lot of opportunities there, I think, to, to still use technology more in a transformational way. Um, but, but obviously, you know, there, there's areas there that are working really well for students. So, you know, at the end of that section, we say to learners, so what one thing should your college do to improve the quality of digital um, teaching and learning? And you'll see, you'll see uh, some words immediately jump out in there. Well, we want more computers, we want better Wi-Fi, um, we want to improve the online experience. But when we sort of analysed, uh, you know, the, the textual responses here, um, there were some common themes coming through and obviously one was around, you know, ac a better access to, um, to online resources, ensuring that st 
staff had the skills to be able to support students to learn more effectively with technology was coming through as another. Um, and obviously, you know, that the, the areas around access um, to computers, to laptops was coming through quite strongly as well. So some very clear themes that uh, are there and some of the recommendations that we put out in the report um, very much pick up on these, uh, these themes. I'm aware there are some questions coming through in the chat. So Owen, please do feel free to stop me at any point if you feel I should need to answer those during, or if not, we'll pick them up at the end. Um, yeah, I think um, there was, there's a couple that's coming through from Kenji, who's unable to speak just now. Um, so over the course of the years that the survey has been run, what significant trends have you seen? So I don't know if that's something that maybe we could pick up close at the end, then if we're talking about changes yeah. from year to year. I mean, just, just going back on that one, just to answer that on the previous question, um, which, uh, you know, I think if I just go back to that one. I think what we are starting to see is that, you know, the, the amount of students that are now getting more digital feedback on their work is increasing. So I'd say on this, this particular question, you know, we are seeing higher percentages now year on year of the more um, transformational aspects of how technology is being used. Um, it's not just about checking on, you know, timetables and, uh, you know, course submission dates, but that we are starting to see um, higher percentages of learners that are accessing and having the opportunity for, for using um, you know, these, these digital activities. And these are really indicative. You know, we, we start off with a list of about 20 different activities, um, but you know, we sort of filter these down to try and sort of give us a, a measure of you know, the interactivity, the transformational aspects of technology within there. But I'll pick up on the other, um, the other sort of trend that we were seeing this year is sort of the decrease in satisfaction around modern reliable Wi-Fi, um, which was interesting um, again this year. So they, although the trends tend to see um, uh, you know, positive movement over the years, there are some questions which you, know, you then say, oh, okay, we've actually seen a drop this year. Um, one that I haven't got in here, um, but we, we've, we've asked the past um, couple of years is around access to data and data protection. Um, and you know, the percentages on there are still fairly low on the low side, but obviously with all the um, increased work that was done around GDPR, that did obviously then have an impact and we were seeing sort of higher percentages progress um, from that point. Okay. So, Thank you for that. And just another little question from Barry there. Um, is there any stats on how many students did not feel that teaching staff had a high enough level of digital competency? So are, are, the, are the students judgmental of their teachers to be, to be measured? I'll, uh, I'll come back to that. So this is, this is where, this is in this section, um, we've, uh, we've, we've got the questions around developing digital skills. Um, so let's pick that, pick that up on, on that one. Um, so the, the sort of the final section is around developing digital skills and we have mm -hmm. updated these questions quite considerably from the ones we were using in 2019, uh, 2018 and 2017, um, partly to try and sort of dig down a bit deeper, um, the sorts of things that you were asking Barry, you know, are, are, are students picking up the fact that, uh, you know, that, that they, they, they are um, indicating that their staff do need, uh, you know, sort of better support with their digital skills. Um, obviously, some of the qualitative commentary that I was referring to earlier in terms of what, you know, what, what one thing we'll come on to in a minute as well. So, you know, it is interesting to just look at both quantitative and then um, particularly at, so bearing in mind that what we are looking at here are the, uh, the collated data sets. But of course, those colleges that are running the surveys individually will be able to drill down into some of the commentary from their students in terms of the individual comments. Um, and I know, you know, certainly um, speaking to colleges that have done this in previous years, that that, that just really opens up such valuable insights um, once you start looking at the individual comments that are at an individual level. Because, um, you know, it does then start to, you know, you will know in the context that you're working in, um, which are the key areas that you think, right, that absolutely, we know that that's something we've got other um, evidence that validates that, that's something that we need to identify as a high priority. So here, it's interesting now, and bear in mind we had, you know, 70, 75, 76% for our quality around the digital environment, learning and teaching, 
Um, and then we asked a similar rating question around the quality of support to develop digital skills. Um, and here the percentages dropped slightly, so we're down at 66%. Um, I still have to say the, these percentages are higher than the than the HE um, percentages. So you know, I think you know, just to bear in mind, I think there is um, some interesting comparisons that can be made around certain of the questions around the HE and, and the FE experiences. Um, and that's that's a whole other webinar. Um, but certainly here, you know, 27% rated it as average. Um, so these weren't looking quite as, as, as positive. Um, and then when you start sort of drilling down, um, so you know, where do opportunities, where do learners have opportunities to discuss their digital skills? So you would be expecting that there would be some conversations um, and discussions at induction. You would hope there'd be some discussion with one-to-one -one sessions with tutors. Um, and of course, importantly, you know, the aspiration that we have is that students will not see this as something that's separate, that learners will be having the opportunities within their course to develop the skills that they need in order to develop their confidence and competence going forward. Um, so, you know, in, in, in their course, it's really, really important to all the other learners. So you can still see there that, you know, 20% of learners did not have the opportunity at all to discuss their digital skills in any of those situations. So, you know, again, so quite concerning there. Um, and then looking at organisational support for learners to develop their digital skills. And still, only 51% of learners agreed they received guidance about the digital skills they needed for their course. So going back to what I was saying earlier about being explicit around how, what technology you're going to be using, how you're going to be using it, why you're using it, how it's going to support you with your progression, either through your college journey, progression into HE, it could be, you know, progression into the workplace. Learners still need to have that better understanding and have that better guidance. And I think this is where it sort of goes back to the level of confidence with staff. If staff are confident about knowing why they're using the technology in this way, what benefits are, how it relates to the workplace, that is then far easier then to articulate back to their learners. If they are not as confident or don't have that understanding, your learners are then not going to, to be able to get that support and guidance. Um, also, only 41% agreed their organisation provided them with a chance to assess their digital skills for career planning. Um, or, you know, to have, uh, um, as, as many of some of you are involved in our work with you around digital capability, you know, the ability for a student to be able to assess or reflect on the capabilities that they, they have or the ones that they may wish to develop and to see how that changes as they move through from their start of their journey through to, you know, when they're thinking about their progression moving into the workplace, what skills do they need, how do they get that support. Um, so, you know, there, there's a comment there about I'd like more conversations about my skills and how I can prove based on the work I've completed. So learners are becoming more aware of the importance and I, you know, particularly in the current situation we're in, um, you know, there's been such a mixed range of views and experiences back from students for some that just felt completely disempowered um, and, and unsupported in being able to learn remotely at home to those that have experienced almost you know an equitable experience of being on campus because of the levels of support that the, the um, you know the levels of, of experience that they, their teachers have in being able to sort of transition into the online world. So this was a question where we said, what one thing should your college do to help learners develop your digital skills? And this is where what came back very strongly from learners was that we need staff that are more confident in using technology. Um, so, you know, I think this ties into all our, all our other research that's coming through. We've had very large pieces of work that Jessica's been involved in recently around reshaping the future of uh, the digital future for EFI. There has been a similar consultation around learning and teaching reimagined in, in higher education. And you know, the, the sort of the three key themes that are coming through from all of that work, including I think coming through from our survey work, is the one around um, if we are thinking about how we can best support students in, in, in the coming year, is around that digital access and equality, 
it is around ensuring that our students have the digital skills and support for that to be able to use technology remotely but of course that goes back to students being capable and confident and then you know lastly thinking about how we redesign the activities that we're asking our learners to do in this sort of hybrid environment that they may be working in and that blend and mix of the face-to-face -face, the remote working and to encourage throughout that the engagement the collaboration the contact so that students still have that opportunity to, to feel part of that learning community. So that, as I say, was a very small cut on the rich data set that we've got. Um, as you can imagine, with nearly 40,000 student responses, there's a lot in there, particularly, you know, as I say, the qualitative and the quantitative and the conclusions that you can draw. Um, we will be publishing it on the 14th of September in terms of full publication and Owen will make sure, of course, that you are able to see spite of that and to sort of publicise that with your colleges. Um, one of the things that, that we are doing just following on from that, and again, I'll make sure as soon as this goes live on our, our GIST website, hopefully it'll be next week, um, but we are running um, a, a webinar, a just wide webinar on the 16th on the 17th of September for FE. Um, 16th of September will be the HU um, results and we'll, we'll have an hour to sort of go through more of the detail um, and the recommendations that are coming through from this work. So I'll make sure, Owen, that you've got sight of those URLs when they're on the GIST website. Um, but, you know, also just to say, and we'll come back to what's happening from October, but we have as well put together um, a GISC uh, sort of toolkit around supporting the digital experience of new students. There is a, a downloadable version for FE that is available from our um, Digital Insights website that has got some really valuable um, sort of hints and tips in terms of, of the areas that we've been discussing today. So, you know, feeding that into your induction plans, I'm sure you're already very underway with that at the moment. Um, but there is some, some useful guidance there as well. But importantly, what I really hope we can do, Owen, is encourage our colleges to sign up to um, work with us and to run the surveys um, from October. The student survey, uh, all of the surveys will open the first week in October. Um, they will close, the student one will close uh, 30th of April. Um, teaching staff um, and professional services will close in June, late June, early July. Um, but of course, you can run the surveys at any point within that window. And you're again, the beauty of it is, is you're able to see that data coming in live. So you have access to all that data real time to be able to then almost um, on the fly. Um, you know, if there are some key issues, you're able to pick those up quite quickly. So hopefully some good opportunities to get involved. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got the, the details there. Um, to get in touch with us. We've got a wider community of practice that focus on, on learners experiences of technology and staff experiences of technology there as well that you can join. So I will stop sharing Wonderful. and hand back to you, Owen. So yes, thank you so much, Sarah. I, I found that very interesting. I'm looking forward to the survey coming out. Um, I think we're going to wrap up this recorded part of the session, but please stay on just now. We'll ask questions. So I'll, to everyone in YouTube land, thank you very much. And as my son's video says, smash that like button, please. And we'll see you all later. Thank you very much.